Got a real busy, busy show today. But uh, hey, you know what? I got some viewer mail, actual viewer mail here. AB4OJ, right? Oh no, not another April Fool's fantasy about the revival of the long gone Morse code requirement. This chestnut comes back year after year. So tiresome and unoriginal. Well, you know what? Maybe if you've been around for 40 years, it is. I got about three dozen emails from guys that just got licensed. They said the sound of the sphincter going was deafening. KI7CHD writes, how far ahead do I have to skip to get past the silliness? To the end, dude. I'm going for my first try at the general next week. I was watching your video on headsets and was wondering if you can give me an idea on headsets for under a hundred dollars. Yes, I can. I will sell you these for fifty dollars. Davy Crockett writes, okay video, you might want to drop the other guy and get a cute girl instead. By the way, are you computer generated or real? Dude, I am 100% computer animation. Gotta love YouTube. And finally, the Pro 7 headset would be better to compare against the radio sport model. I have both and see pros and cons. Maybe you didn't have a Pro 7 available. I was fortunate to test the prototype. Nice job on the video. Your wish is my command. I had a whole bunch of those. Today, we're, uh, we're doing the Pro 7. Next week, we're doing the Radio Sport. And then we're gonna go head to head and shoot them out. So the legs of my 80 meter inverted V were kind of starting to droop. Getting a little low to the ground. I was getting some visoir issues. I needed to fix it. So I came up with this brilliant idea of turning it into a Armstrong rotatable 80 meter inverted V. I'll show you how to do that. So let's get busy. I think wire in the sky is a thing of beauty, and I've got plenty of it. Uh, one of my biggest ones here, obviously, is this 80 meter inverted V that I built out of basically scrap uh, from the house. Uh, anyway, in its current configuration, the legs have started drooping, and now I've got things that are just, well, <laughs> a foot off the ground. To fix this problem, I came up with what I consider the most creative way uh, of making myself a 10 foot pole. This is gonna get the wire off the ground. Hey, it's simple. One and a half inch PVC drilled at the top, drilled at six feet then, and I sunk it in cement buckets or buckets of cement. I drilled it here at the top, that's at about 10 feet, measured it down eyeball, down to about six feet. It gives me a place to tie off wire and it gives me another place to sink the uh, line if it's too high. This yeah. was the fun part. Uh, it's 50 pounds and no matter how you slice it, it's uh, 50 pounds of walking. And it's downhill also. Oh yeah, when you're carrying uh, a 10 foot pole, you gotta watch the trees because everything is gonna get in the way. I get that a 10 foot PVC pole in a bucket of cement is not really the most attractive thing in the world, but you know what? My wife is understanding, and now I have a true Armstrong rotatable 80 meter inverted V. I've decided that I wanted to orient this leg toward the north, so I'm broadside to the east, because hey, I'm on the west coast. Of course, gonna hang up on a tree. This was a relatively cheap antenna to build, under $75 for the total cost of it. Uh, I used leftover wire, a are. leftover paint roller that I bent over to get the strain relief away from the pole, and you'll see that coming up. Today I've oriented the legs of this antenna uh, due north and southeast, 
kind of gives me the best coverage of all worlds for today. And while it may look a little funky, my SWR problems are over. One to one on the entire 80 meter band and 1.1 to 5 on 40 meters. There you have it, an ugly rotatable 80 meter inverted V. No tower required. I brought, uh, brought my buddy Ty back in here because he started this thing with me and he's gonna finish it to the very bitter end. Heil sent me over the Pro 7. That's what we're gonna do. As Ty unboxes this thing. Who boxed this thing? <laughs> well, I had it out, so I, I put it back in the box. Comes with the headset, and what else is in there? <laughs> yeah, get rid of that. What's this? Left side speaker box. Oh, and okay. a box. And a box. And the boxes. Screw that. They're gone. That came in the box today. So it's in there. We're gonna we'll we'll look at it. We'll talk about it. Looking at them, I'm impressed with the overall finish, the overall quality, the way it's put together. I like the injection molded plastic. I think that's kind of nice. I think it's um, well finished. It's clean. We've put fingerprints all over it. Good job on that. Uh, padding on the top. And the my head's a little bigger than most, so we had to stretch them a little bit. I think is what I'm gonna have to do to wear them right. Um, interesting locking clicking sure tell when you're moving the microphone but it bends and moves i'm gonna go ahead and put them on real quick <laughs> at least now you can't hear what i'm saying about you huh yeah oh great good hey overall um, first impression i like the way it fits so i'm trying to find some weak stations on dx watch to really give it a good evaluation of the ear quality and the sound quality that comes out of these headphones. Heil does not skimp in the box. I am most impressed with, uh, with, with what came in the box here, minus the, uh, minus the other mic element here, uh, which is, it's red like a hot mic element. I but think anyway. it's dangerous. I think it, it may be. What comes in the box or what comes on here are these gel foamed, gel filled ear things. What are they called? Ear? Ear things. Ear I think things. you're right. Yeah. Ear cups, ear covers, ear yes, something rather. Yes, ear things. These are like a gel. It is really super comfortable. The, the speaker quality is wonderful. Absolutely amazing tones in here it's full it doesn't seem compressed i haven't even played with the equalizer settings on my radio you also get these uh, uh foam ones regular standard foam and sweat covers and sweat covers you can probably wash those so you get rid of the sweat stink yeah a real handy little push to talk switch so you can operate you can click it onto your shirt or wherever, and you could just push to talk. Comes with a standard, uh, what is that, a half inch phono jack? Yeah, it's so. Super long. This thing is like nine or 10 foot cord. This would be really, really cool for, uh, say, like field day or a D expedition. It is absolutely long. I could, you could damn near get across the room. Thank you, Bob, for a nice coiled cord. Again, this is what I like in my personal shack because it helps keep uh, keeps that front of the desk tidy. So when I'm making these videos, uh, the world doesn't see what a freaking slob I really am. I was a little disappointed. Uh, Bob sent him out. Bob Heil sent him out, but he sent us black ones, not pink ones. That's what I was hoping for, is a set of pink ones to really pop in, in the show here. But actually, I will admit, I broke down and read the instructions. To adjust this headset, you adjust the AF gain on your radio first. So it's if you have hearing impairment in one ear or a difference in your ear, in your hearing, right? That makes no sense to me being a left ear balance, because what if my left ear hears a heck of a lot better than my... Oh, wait, no. What if my left ear hears horribly and my right ear hears great? So, yes, you can turn it around. So now it's a 
Right ear balance, makes sense. I can't spin this without taking the headset off. So I take the headset off and do that, depending on which way I need it set up, depending on how I pick them up, because lo and behold, they're black. They're pretty much identical on either side, except for the mic. If you have it spun up, you pick them up, put them on. My impression, slightly different from his, and mine's right. I agree with you about this uh, for a different reason. I like to sit in the shack and I like to eat every once in a while and drink. So I've got to pull this out of my pull this out of my way to, to eat. And if I grab it, I'm grabbing this here, grabbing this as opposed to being able to grab it from here and push it out of the way. This is so tight that detent is so tight I find myself I'm gonna wiggle this thing uh, I'm gonna wiggle this uh, this boom loose inside of here while I'm trying to rotate this thing up so that was I don't the only thing I don't like about it is the left side to be honest because then when we first put them on you said this goes on your left ear and I said okay well that goes on my left ear hey <laughs> McFly. Who cares what it says on there if it just works? Well, yeah, but it's reading it and you said to do it the way that it said. Really? They told your mother not to have children. <laughs> She's probably regretting that about now. <laughs> okay, another thing that I like about the Pro 7, other than the fact that it is a whole leap forward to everything that I've used prior to this, this little guy here, the replaceable um, mic cords, and everything is done, this is all done on a, what is it, a five pin system that plugs into the, uh, it plugs into the headset, and it's locked in there really firmly. Well, Bob, I, I'm a, I agree with you. I like how that plugs in. Mm -hmm. I like the Heil, I like that system that he's adopted on this headset. Yep. One thing I've always had a question for Kyle. Correct me if I'm wrong. How do I plug this into my damn radio? I don't plug it in. I can't. I can plug that in. Well. That's awesome. I can plug that in. Hold on. I can plug. I... <laughs> Wait, no. I can plug. Okay, hold on a second. I got all confused again. I can plug that into most of my radios or that into most of my radios, and I get great audio out of a headset like this. My question. I've never been able to plug this into anything. I've tried and tried and tried. So I did a little research before I came over. Mm -hmm. And I found out you can have this. Yeah. They're radio specific. I know. But different radios have different pins on I, I to yeah, get I into the front of the radio. To the front of the radio to key it. But this wasn't in the box. It's an extra option. Right. Which I understand, you have to have it, I get it. You plug in here, and then you plug in, which I will give you kudos, because I don't think I've seen this in any other box. Plug that in. Mm -hmm. Now that I've spent the extra whatever on this. 15, 20 bucks. 15, 20 bucks to get radio specific, I can key my radio by pushing this. Yep. And now I know, here comes the emails. Idiot tie, you can use a foot switch. You can use this button, which Heil is now included. That's really, I think, cool. I don't know, you could, shoot, I can think of a thousand different ways you can mount this thing to use it. You could use it knee, you could use it here, you could use it wherever. But you still have to buy this cable. And then for me, you have to, that probably doesn't matter, but audio quality, you have one more pin here that you're doing. One more break in your audio chain. You get all excited and you pull it out by accident. You can't talk. You don't know why. One more break, basically, is my opinion on that. And you might have some grounding issues. One of the things I am very, very impressed. This is like an aviation-style headphone. Uh, it's really, really well sealing. I was able to hear a lot of really uh, super low signals when I was testing these things out and I used them for a few days a lot of it was not on camera 
uh, I can hear, I hear weak signals where I couldn't pick them out, can't pick them out with the pro sets, um, but I can definitely pick them out with these. These ear cups are pretty substantial. I love the gel. I just adore the gel on these things. Uh, the fit and the finish, this is like a foam in here. It's kind of like a gelled foam up top and it really works very well. Um, I like the locks on here. These locks are wonderful because once you get these things fitted for you, you're generally not giving them up. Uh, my opinion, that's just my opinion. I. <laughs> <laughs> you had to hold on to them harder. I'm a fan of these so far. I like the phase switch. That's something that I liked in the uh, in the cheaper models of the Hiles that I've had, and I really enjoy them. That is actually an extremely cool feature. Um, I was listening to a pileup. Could barely, barely hear the guy calling CQ or actually calling QRZ and and just calling, you know, calling out people's call signs. And when I flipped this, it gave just that little tiny edge that changed it enough that you could now pick out his voice through all the QRM. Ty, did, what was your experience? About the same. I'd love to see phase in and out on the receiving end of a, of a pileup. <laughs> Fuck me, that was bad. Wanted to look at the cups, the ear cups themselves. So we took off the foam. I don't think that would be very comfortable without the foam, and it's not designed to be used without the foam. It's very shallow. Nice that it's that close. Very big can speaker. Can I see in there? Yeah, you can see in there. Oh, okay. So the speaker's right up against that. Right there. So set these aside for a second. What gives you the spacing for your ear to sit in there is the foam or the gel. That gel is thick. That foam's pretty thin. You can see the difference there of the two. The um, That's a pretty substantial difference. Very substantial. It gives you a lot of uh, clearance for your ear. My ears are a little larger, so I like a little more clearance here. These are really comfortable. I could use them for hours. I'll tell you what, there's a huge difference between these old uh, Pro Set 2s and, mm -hmm. and, and the new ones on the Pro 7. That brand new foam is a lot nicer than the, the old stuff. So, ah, you sound much better that way into these. Um, like I said, we're doing the whole headset thing and your audio quality came up, you lost the echo in the room. So hopefully I don't have any echo and I don't know if I need to adjust the mic in or out. Uh, tell me which way is better. That's in against myself and that's out a little bit farther. Which way was better? Big punch when I'm close and away from it, it sounds just well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's a great review on it and a great uh, thanks for letting me know what the audio quality was on the other end. I'm looking at the band scope here and it doesn't seem to change too much, but uh, definitely you sound good coming back to me. K5 RCS in Texas, thank you very much for the report and um, I'm going to let you guys go back to what you're doing, but thank you for the report and I'm sure uh, it'll be on uh, K6 UDA radio on YouTube here shortly. So. So after evaluating the Pro 7, what do we think of it? All right, overall quality, I give these an A minus. That's due to the plastic. I think there's a room for improvement on the ear cups themselves. Other than that, they're great. Features, I give a B2 because of the mic boom. I think it'll break over time, so it gets a B on mic boom. Audio quality on the receive side, we get an A. Plus, that's based on re signal reports um, I received back during testing and the fact that I can change the element. Received audio, I give these an A. That's based on fit and audio quality out of the speakers. Cabling and accessories, I give a C. That's based on the plug. That is solely based on the plug. Value, overall value, I give these an A 
I think they're going to be um, usable for a very long period of time. My overall grade is a B plus. That mic thing, that clicking was the biggest detractor on this whole set of headphones here. I'm going to give overall quality of these things an A minus. Uh, the features, I give them an A. Audio quality, transmit audio quality. I got good signal reports out of these things, but I got good signal reports with these uh, with this headset. The receive audio was an A plus plus for me. That was that was the kicker. That receive audio. Uh, I like the fact that you got a lot of stuff in the box. Coil cord, the straight cord, the extra set of headphones, uh, and the puck, and, and the transmit puck. I, I have to agree with you on having to buy an extra piece to fit it to your radio. When you're spending that much, you expect it to work right away. I got to agree with you um, on that. I'm giving that a B. The value on this, definitely an A. My overall grade is an A minus. They're not perfect, but they're close to it. <laughs> well, thank you for including me in this. I want to thank you for being free help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm free? Being cheap enough that I can afford you. Bob, I feel honored to have been here and do this. I want to thank you, and I want to thank Bob Heil for sending these so we could beat them up and look at them. Bob? It was a pleasure reviewing your stuff here. Uh, we had a great time. I hope it doesn't come back too beat up for you. Uh, but if it does, and you want to sell them to me at a discount, we might be able to arrange something like that. Next time, we're reviewing the Radio Sport headset. That one's coming from Radio Sport. And after that, we're going to... We're going to shoot these bad boys out head-to-head -head in the Battle Royale here on K6UDA. Hey, Ty, thanks for coming and playing with me. Mm. Uh, I know you got better things to do like watching TV in your mom's basement. <laughs> Guys, that's it for this time. We had a great time. I hope you did too. Like the show. Like this right now. Subscribe to my channel. Help build this thing. Share it on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, I don't know, whatever. And hey, and talk about it on ham radio. That's a really good one. Anyway, hey guys, I'm Bob, K6UDA. And I'm Ty, W6TJR. And Bob, do you know how you can double your ratings on the show? Uh, how? Get one more person to like it, you beat oh, it too. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's the first good joke he's made. Hey guys. We're out of here. 7-3. We'll catch you next time.